TG boats off the Fort B. Bryce is not here at the moment. This is Admiral Stewart. What is it? Somebody sent his comment up, sir. Lieutenant Ward Stewart. Shall I have him wait? No. Have him come in. Hello, Ward. My Uncle Bob, what are you doing so far from Washington? I'm here on an inspection tour. Come in. Thank you. Well, it certainly is an unexpected pleasure seeing you here. I was supposed to go back this morning, but I'm staying over until tomorrow night. And I'm glad because it's given me the chance to see you. Sit down. Thanks. Maybe you can tell me why they sent for me. Oh, yes. Well, we've come to that. First, I want to tell you what a swell job you did sinking that submarine. Oh, thank you, sir. It was a neat job of work all around. Tell me about it. Well, there, there isn't much to tell. That U-boat never had a chance. As a matter of fact, no submarine has much of a chance against those PT boats. 
You like the BT boats, eh? Like them. It's absolutely the best branch of the service. <laughs> you said that about battleships when you were in one. Well, PT's a flyweight battleship, only much more maneuverable. And I recall your enthusiasm for cruisers when you were serving in them. PT's a bantam cruiser, only much easier to handle. And when you were in destroyers. PT's a lightweight destroyer, only much faster. Oh, it's a great fighting ship, sir. Well, I understand exactly how you feel. I feel the same way about submarines and the men in them. They're picked men, picked for their character, their sense of duty and discipline, their hearts and their heads. They're a wonderful body of men. Not enough of them. There's a shortage of trained officers. Um, about my being ordered to New London, sir. That was my suggestion, Ward. How long have you been submarines? Two years. With an excellent record, as I recall. Thank you, sir. I was mighty glad to get out of them, if you don't mind my saying so. That's quite all right. I'm interested in your views on submarines. Well, go ahead. Off the record, Uncle Bob? Off the record. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's no life for a dog, even a sea dog. I'd much rather sink them than sail them any day. Well, my boy, it looks like you're going to sail them. But the PTs, Uncle Bob, I, I wouldn't be happy in any other branch of the service. The stewards have been in the Navy for three generations. They've been happy in any branch of the service. Yes, sir. Do you think I'm tied to my desk in Washington because I prefer it? No, sir. I'm serving where I'm needed most. And you're being assigned where you're needed most. Yes, sir, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I'll be very glad to get back to submarines. That's that spirit. Still, um... Yes? If I may say so... Go right ahead. Those PTs are a work of art, sir. So are the submarines. That's right. I'll have you meet Captain Bryson. He'll introduce you to your new skipper. They, uh... They shipped me up here so quickly that I didn't have a chance to attend to some personal business. I wonder if I could have weekend leave. Why, certainly. You rate a bit of leave. I'm sure it can be arranged. Thank you, sir. next week. Yes, sir, maybe. What do you mean, maybe, MacDonald? Well, we can't leave without an executive officer, can we, sir? Certainly not. And we ain't got no executive officer, have we, sir? Well, Captain Bryson promised we'd have one last week. Yes, sir. But we didn't get one last week. We didn't get one this week. We probably won't get one next week. No? We'll see about that. How are you doing? Good morning, sir. Well, you look as though you had a little steam to blow up. Yes, sir, I have. May I blow it? Go ahead, open the valves. A whole slew of submarines just pulled out of here, sir. Every day, boats are shoving off and we stay tied up to the dock. My men are getting fat and my boat's getting barnacles on it, all on account of a replacement. One measly replacement. You're not due to leave them next week, are you? No, sir, but we won't be able to leave then unless we get that man. What's the matter with Washington, sir? Why don't we unscrew that guy from his swivel chair and send him down here so we can get away from that dock? I take it you're inquiring about your new executive officer. Yes, sir. Well, there he is. Connors, be Lieutenant Stewart. How do you do, yes, sir? I'll see you later, gentlemen. <laughs> Glad to meet you, Stewart. I hope you'll overlook that crank about the swivel chair. Oh, sure, sure. What was your last ship? Mosquito boat, sir. PT-14. Oh, I certainly hated to leave it. I developed quite a end for those fast, open boats, and frankly, this is going to be quite a letdown. Some cigarettes, sir? Thanks. Annapolis, huh? As a class of 36. Got 
have a look at the boat? Well, you see, I came here with only a toothbrush, sir, and uh, the Admiral's been kind enough to let me have weekend leave so I could clear up a little personal business. That is, if it's all right with you, sir. Oh, that's all right with me. Everybody says it'll be a long war. Thank you, sir. Well, Captain. Well, we got our executive officer back. That is, we will have him Monday. I hope. I might go back to the boat and tell Mr. Brown to take over. I'll be back in a couple of hours. All right, sir. Take care of the girls and, and see if they get on the train, won't you? Yes. I'll be right along. Hello, sweet. You had me worried. I thought you were going to miss your train. Oh, Dewey, darling, I'm so sorry I was late. I didn't know that a last minute. Well, what is this, Jean? An airy drill? Are you moving the whole school? <laughs> no, just the honor students. They get the trip as a prize. Miss Bomley was going to take them herself, but she had a toothache, so I was elected. Well, I thought it was kind of sudden. Where are you taking them, teacher? Oh, just a few places of historic interest. How long are you going to be away? Several days. Several days? When you go away on your ship, it's for several weeks. Now you know how I feel. You mean to say you miss me? I mean to say. That's nice. A boat! Come on. Oh. I wish I were an honor student, Jean, so I could come along, too. Why don't you? You can make the next train. Can't you get away for a few days? No, I'm afraid that's impossible, Jean. I wish I could. Can't you even get one day's leave? Now, don't tempt me. Boy! I'm going to miss you an awful lot, darling. Drop me a line, will you? Good. Have a nice trip. Oh! Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I brought these for you. What are you doing in my berth? You know that I was just about to ask you that same question. What are you going to do? I'm going to call the porter and have him put you out. I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's liable to create an unfortunate impression, not warranted by the facts. Especially as this happens to be my berth. It is not your berth. I have lower six. Well, there seems to be a difference of opinion about that, but it's certainly easy enough to find out. Well, what do you know about that? You're right. Social error. My ticket calls for upper six. Please accept my apologies. Now, will you please get out? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Anything I can do for you, Miss Hewlett? Oh, no, no. Thank you very much. No! Would you mind taking that ladder off my foot? Oh, I'm sorry. Good night. Glad to have you aboard. Excuse me, I left my sick... Oh, yes, of course, there it is. Thank you. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you. Good night.
Good night. Good morning. This way, sir. Good morning. I hope you slept well last night. And the children? They had me worried when I saw you rounding them up this morning. I thought you were their mother. I was quite relieved to find out that you're only their teacher. The porter told me. I was interested to hear that these young ladies are sort of uh, super quiz kids. That you're taking them on a tour as a reward for their being at the head of their class. The porter mentioned it to me. Oh, by the way, Miss Hewlett, I understand you're going to Washington. The porter. My name is Ward Stewart. I know Washington very well. It's a madhouse there now, you know, standing room only. I sincerely hope for your sake that you have your hotel reservations. By the way, where are you staying? Ask the porter. Come on, girl. Try the Mayflower. But I've got a reservation, I tell you. It expired at noon. Well, it's only five after that now. Uh, please, sir, try the Mayflower. What do you know about that? You give up everything to come here and work for a dollar a year, and you can't find a place to live. Big man in Texas, ain't you? What do your constituents say? I'll see the Postmaster General about this. I hope he mails us back. Oh, please, sir, try the Mayflower. We did try the Mayflower. There's not a thing over there. Try the Mayflower. We have tried the Mayflower. We've tried the Mayflower, and they told us to try the Carlton. I've been to every other hotel in Washington. We've walked our feet off. The children are about to collapse. We don't have to have a suite. We'll take one room if necessary. Have you tried the Mayflower? Would you get me Mr. Simmons on the desk, please? Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Couldn't you put us in the basement? The basement is all filled up. Well, then give us a tent. We'll pitch it on the roof. I mean it. I'm sorry, miss, but the roof is... Hello? Hello, Mr. Simmons. This is Lieutenant Stewart speaking. Yes, sir. I'm checking out, but on one condition. I want the young lady that you're talking to now to have my rooms. Yeah, but wait a minute. Don't you tell her that I suggested it. I understand, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're the luckiest woman in Washington. We've just had a cancellation. Oh, Pardon me. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, again, yeah, no. Anybody there? Well. Well. Really, this is too much. What do you mean by following me around? The following seems to be with the other foot now. These happen to be my rooms. They're nothing of the sort. Well, if you take the time to look around, you'd find my baggage is still here someplace. There was some luggage here, but I had it moved to the storage room. Well, I'm sorry. You'll have to have it moved right back in again. You had no right to move my baggage out of my rooms. This might have been your rooms, but you checked out. I did nothing of the kind. Yes, you did. I was there and heard the clerk take the call. Well, it didn't come from me. Oh, wait a minute. I'm surprised at you. That's an old trick. Everybody knows it. You can't get any accommodation, so you have one of your Confederates call up, check somebody out, and then you barge in. Are you accusing me of such a cheap, shabby trick? All I know is that I didn't check out. All I know is that I checked in and I'm staying in. You'll have to find other quarters. Where? I don't know. Say like here. Try the Mayflower. Uh, just a minute, young lady. I don't have to remind you that the armed forces have priority over civilians. <clears throat> Where's that telephone? What are you going to do? I'll call a house detective. Oh, wait a minute, please. Yes? We're only going to be here such a short while. Couldn't you? No, I couldn't. And this is what you get for not casting your bread upon the waters. What bread? Last night when I moved in on you by mistake, you flung me out. You wouldn't even say goodnight to me and I gave you three chances. And this morning when I tried to help you, you, you walked right out on me. I apologize. Now, Captain. Lieutenant. I throw myself entirely on your generosity. For myself, I could manage, but the children, poor dears, they're, they're so exhausted. Lieutenant, surely... 
Well, I'll, uh... I'll have to give this some thought. I'm against appeasement as a rule, but in this case, I'm willing to discuss a negotiated peace. You keep the bedroom, I'll take the parlor. Oh, but, Lieutenant, we're seven. You're only one. Since you're an officer and a, and a gentleman. And I was a Boy Scout. All right, you win. You can have the whole works. Oh, thank you so much. Under certain conditions. Oh? Now, you know from your own experience how difficult it would be for me to find any place to sleep in Washington. Don't you know anybody here? Well, I know an admiral, but you wouldn't have me inconvenience him. Well, you might try a Turkish bath. No, no, no. No, I'm allergic to steam. No, I'm afraid there's only one out for me. I'll just have to stay up all night. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't think anything more of it. I'm quite used to staying up all night. It's just that I, I get terribly lonesome. But we can cure that, too. You'll have dinner with me. But that's impossible. Why, the children, I... Oh, have well, to... the little angels can have dinner sent up here. And then I'll pick you up afterwards and take you on a personally conducted tour of Washington. The time will fly by, and before you know it, it'll be morning. Are you suggesting that I stay up all night? Oh, no, oh, no, not at all. Not all of it. Just part of it, say, till uh, midnight. Is that agreeable? Certainly not. <laughs> Very well. Would you send up a Pinkerton man, please? Oh, please don't do that. Cancel it. That isn't gold on your uniform, it's brass. There's an embassy party tonight. What time should I pick you up? You realize this is blackmail? Make it seven. It's terribly crowded here, don't you think? It's nicer out here, isn't it? Goodbye. Who's that nice little man you introduced me to in there? What little man was that? You know, the, uh, the one with glasses. Oh, his name was Litvinov. <gasps> he was cute. Did you say Litvinov? Yes, Litvinov. When I tell him back home I met the Russian ambassador, they won't believe me. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm having a wonderful time. Well, you're entitled to it. You're a wonderful girl. You make up your mind very quickly, don't you? Well, I know. I'm an expert. You might even say that I'm a connoisseur. <laughs> I have an answer for that. But I can't think of it just now. The champagne. What time is it? Time stops on a night like this. After three. Five after three? And Miss Hewitt isn't home yet. She said she'd be home not later than midnight. Mm. Should we worry? Something must have happened to Miss Hewitt. Should we do something? We could call the police. Yeah, let's, let's do, do that, that. I said. Let's do I don't think we should see each other anymore. You know, it'll be a crime if you don't get to know me better. Oh, an egotist. Well, all right, then it'll be a crime if I don't get to know you better. No, really. I think it'd be much better if it ends now. Get away, I'll make a deal with you. Have dinner with me tonight. And if after that you still feel the same way you do now, I, I promise never to see you again. Is that a deal? It's a deal. 
Dungy. Good night. I'll pick you up at seven, Sean. Miss Hewitt, please. Miss Hewitt checked out, Lieutenant. What? Mr. Simmons. Yes, sir. When did Miss Hewitt check out? About an hour ago. Oh, by the way, she left a note for you, Lieutenant. Mr. Simmons. Yes, sir. Did she leave any forwarding address? Just a moment. Bromley School for Girls, New London. New London? Yes, sir. Connecticut? Connecticut. No, it can't be. It's illogical. Things like that just don't happen. <laughs> I don't understand, sir. Try the Mayflower. Ambassadors, senators, diplomats, generals and admirals. Everybody was anybody in Washington was there. We had a fabulous time. We had caviar and drank champagne and danced the whole night through. It was just like a dream. A lovely dream. But I don't understand why you broke your date with him the next day. Strategic retreat. Oh, to avoid encirclement, huh? It was only an episode. For a moment, it had me worried. Jean, how about your friend, the Rock of Gibraltar? Haven't you got a guilty conscience? Don't be silly. The Rock's the one you marry. After all, we're not engaged. It's a small world, isn't it? It's him. Why oh, so frightened? He is a dream. That's one I did not walking around here. What'll I do? If it were I, I'd probably break an ankle rushing downstairs. Miss Hewlett. Miss Hewlett. How did you find me? The porter told me. Can I come up? It's against the rules. Will you come down, then? No callers are permitted on the school premises, except parents. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not a parent yet. Someday I hope to be. Please come down. It's terribly important. Practically a crisis. I suppose Miss Bromley should see him standing there. Do you want me to go down and get ribbon for you? Will you? Oh, I'd be glad to. May I borrow your lipstick, please? Never mind. I'll get rid of you myself. Wells? Teacher, I brought you something. <laughs> Thank you. I told you no one was allowed on these premises. You got back safely? Quite safe. How are the children? Fine, thank you. Ah, oh, bless their little hearts. Would I... you mind getting down to the crisis? The crisis? Oh, yes. Yes. The last time I saw you, we made an arrangement. But you didn't keep your end of the bargain. I'm going to give you another chance. Will you have dinner with me tonight? I have an appointment for dinner. You are the most beautiful... Don't say it. You know, when you broke that date with me, you said that you thought it would be safer for you in New London than in Washington. Is that what you want? Safety? Yes. You know, you present quite a problem. I think I can solve it for you. Really? Mm-hmm. Goodbye and good luck. Miss Hewlett, I... I don't care for any dessert, please. What are you dreaming about, sweet? Dewey, let's get married. Hmm? What? Let's get married. When? Tonight. 
I've been wanting to ask you that for weeks. Why didn't you? Well, I... sort of waiting to get another stripe on my sleeve. I know that sounds funny, Jean. But I wouldn't want you to marry anyone under the rank of a full commander, at least. But I don't want to marry a rank, Dewey. I want to marry you. Oh, it's not the rank. <laughs> it takes money to get married, Jean. Not the original cost, but the upkeep. I want you to have a place of your own. That's where the pay comes in. Probably we'll have some brats of our own, too, and that's where the pay comes in again. We have to think of those things. Especially now, when we're at war and everything is so... Well, anyway, it's nice to know that everything's snug and safe ashore. Snug and safe. Yes, it is nice to know. But I don't feel that way without you. Well, darling, maybe when we get back, we'll have get the... Get back? Are you going to see? Mm -hmm. We're leaving tonight. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Just a little fishing trip. Chapman. Crutchfield. Yeah. Millard. Yeah. One Trapsky. One Trapsky. Williams. Yeah. Rutledge. On the bridge. I'll put the car for it, sir. All right, then. Pull out and gather around. Most of you sailed on the Corsair before. I don't need to say anything to you. To the new men aboard, I have only this to say. Since Pearl Harbor, the ship has always returned from a cruise with a broom at the masthead. A clean sweep. I know we'll do it again. Mr. Stewart, make preparation to get underway immediately. I ask. Station the sea detail. First section has the watch. First section, sea detail. All set, Mr. Stewart? Yes, sir. Take her out. I ask. Take in two and three. Take in two and three. Take in four. Take in four. Take in one. Take in one. Starboard back two thirds, port back one third. Starboard back two thirds, port back one third. Rudder amidships. Rudder amidships. About a little relief. I've been on for six hours. That's right. Okay, Mr. Brown. Okay. Uh, Pat, come on, take a minute. Okay. After torpedo room. After torpedo room. After torpedo room. Aye, aye. Sound runners to control room to relieve John. To relieve Johnson on the bow planes. Aye, aye, sir. Chief. What's wrong, Chief? I... Nothing. I'm a little attack of indigestion. I guess I'll be all right. Meanwhile, I'm all right. Well, I How about a cup of coffee, Chief? No, I don't want to eat you ever, thank you.
Are you asleep, Doc? Huh? Oh, hello, Oliver. You're a pharmacist, mate. What are they put nitroglycerin in the pills for? Nitroglycerin? Yeah. That's what they give to people whose hearts are on the blink. Why? Something wrong with your ticket? No, no, I'm all right. I'm just inquiring for a friend. Uh, well, if I were you, I'd tell him to see a doctor before he took any of those. Yeah. Five feet, sir. Bring up the periscope dip. Come on, have a look. My eye, sir. Forty feet. Get that problem solved, Brownie? Yeah. It was a lane 100 miles long and 14 miles wide. <laughs> See what I mean? 30 days to patrol a lane 14 miles wide and 100 miles long. With one of those torpedo boats, I could have patrolled the whole North Atlantic in half that time, with the Caribbean thrown in. Have you seen those new PTs? They've got everything on them but a wobble <laughs> iron. Look. PT boat with a waffle on. What would you say that was? It's a freighter, sir. Right rudder, new course 250. Right rudder, new course 250, sir. The Swedish flag. Seem to be in distress. The men are working on something aft. They might be shifting cargo, sir. They might be laying mines. Laying mines out here? We'll have a look. Down periscope. Station for battle service. All ahead two thirds. All ahead two thirds, sir. Station for battle service. Battle surface, take her up. Hard rise. Slow one, two, and five. for boarding and inspection of ship's papers. Was wollen Sie? Sie wollen an Bord. Wunderbar. Lass Sie nur kommen. Sie befehlen, Herr Kapitän. Fair to board, Mr. Stewart. Aye, aye, sir. I'm sorry we haven't got a PT boat to send you over in, but... Uh... Thank you. 
and start dropping ash cans. Now, how much water we got on it, Brownie? Fifteen fathoms, sir. Bulldog's away from sea. Bulldog's away from sea. Take that to the bottom, Mr. Stewart. All right, brace yourselves, man. We're going to hit. All right, boys, take it easy. Smoking lamp is lit for ten minutes. Pass the word. All hands. Smoking lamp is lit. Ten minutes. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. You better go forward and see how the men are, Mr. Stewart. Yes, sir. Fire! Everything quiet and serene forward, sir. Very well. After torpedo room reports flooding, sir. Thank it, Mac. On the uh, hey, sir. Stand by, motor home. Ah. Okay, Chief. Secure the watertight doors. Secure the watertight doors. Shall I sound the crash alarm, sir? And let that cue boat hear us. Delay it. Turn on your high pressure pump. Break out the caulking tools. The emergency shores. Stand by your salvage. Turn on the emergency light. Hurry up, we're there. I were up there in one of those PT boats. Well, you're not, Mr. Stewart. Oh, Mr. Stewart. Go forward and tell them to take the torpedoes out of one and two. Did you say out? I said out. Aye, right, aye. Right. Brownie? Yes, sir. Break out about ten life jackets and bring them forward on the double. I don't get it. What's the skipper taking the fish out for? Tell Oliver to rustle up all the empty packing cases and debris he can find. Help him bring it in here on the house. All you men strip off your clothes, down to your skivvies. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, would you tell me... Well, what... you can't get away, Mr. Stewart. You play possum. Are they ready? Yes, sir. Give me those caps. Here they are, sir. Fill up the impulse air pressure. Yes, sir. Stewart. Aye, Engine room. Engine room, aye, aye. Stand by to pump 100 gallons of fuel oil overboard. Open the outer doors. Aye, sir. Stand by, Mr. Stewart. Yes, Engine room. Outer doors open, sir. Engine room, aye, aye. Pump the oil overboard. Aye, aye. You all set? One set, sir. That one. Secure the outer doors. Come along, Mr. Stewart. Right. Captain said his head. 
Bowman, get the pharmacist, mate. Aye, right, sir. Help get the captain to his cabin. Go, Rome. Go, Rome. Make the captain for us. Da drüben sind Sie. Elf. Elf, wunderbar. Where's that cue boat? Bearing 5-0, sir. Can you give me an estimate on her speed? 5 knots, sir. Well, it looks like the skipper fooled them. They won't drop any more ash cans. Now's the time to get away. Now's the time to get, period. Mac, how much water do we have to take in to put her on the bottom? 4,000 pounds, sir. We're coming up. Pump from auxiliary to sea. Pump from auxiliary to sea. How are the buildings there? The torpedo room practically dry, sir. Thousand Put those fish back in one and two. Aye, aye, sir. Thousand out. Once your brakes loose, bring her up easily. Aye, aye, sir. 3,000 out. Secure at 5,000. Secure at 5,000, sir. Two, sir. Motor room answers all ahead one third, sir. Right full rudder. Right full rudder, sir. New course 290. New course 290, sir. 60. And your level are off and hold her at 40 feet. I said. Cue boat slowing down, sir. Coming up awful fast. More dive on the bow plane. More dive on the bow plane, sir. 40. Up there, let's go. Hold it. Steady as you go. Steady as you go, sir. Are all torpedo tubes ready for firing? Three and four ready, sir. Mark. Two eight five, sir. Enemy bearing. Zero zero three. Angle on the bow. Eighty port. One and two ready, sir. Stop running. Enemy speed zero. Watch your depth, Steve. Watch your depth. Range twelve hundred. Firing order one and two. Firing order one and two. You're right on it, sir. Stand by one. Stand by one. Fire one. Fire one. One fire, sir. Well, babies, you run your way. Do your stuff. Stand by two. Stand by two. Fire two. Fire two. Two fired, sir. Stevie. Oh, one, two, and five. Going below. Mac, tell Oliver to bring me up a cup of coffee. Nice. Right, I'm going to make it too, Mac. Nice. Right, nice way for Oliver. Beautiful evening. Yes, it is. It's usually like that in these latitudes. How do you feel, Captain? Oh, fine. I want to congratulate you on the way you got that cue boat. Well, he got us if you hadn't played possum. You know, I'm thinking someday they'll make a torpedo boat that'll submerge. That's funny you should mention that, Captain, because I've been thinking of a way to make a submarine go 50 knots. <laughs> yeah, cigarette? Thanks, Dewey. You're welcome, Ward. Let's go below and have a smoke.
nice to see you back. Where'd you get that broom? Don't tell him, make him guess. <laughs> Uh, it sure feels good to see the sun after 60 days. Give me the officer's top, yes, will you, please? You see what I mean? You come back from one of these cruises and look like you've been born in a pool room and graduated from Alcatraz. Yeah, sure, but you hit for these lights, and before you know it, you look and feel like you just got back from Palm Beach. Well, on a PT boat, you don't have to depend on a sun lamp. Will you pipe down about those PTs for a while? Yeah, you are, sir. Thank you. Give me the dining room, please. Yes, on those PTs, you get the real article all day long. Sun and wind and spray. This is Lieutenant Commander Connor speaking. We just got back from a cruise. We're coming over for lunch. There'll be two of us. Oh, no. No meats, no steaks, no chops. We want vegetables. Fresh vegetables. Fresh vegetables. All you've got. And milk. Not out of cans. Not out of cans. And fruit. Plenty of fresh fruit. Watermelon. And above all, butter. Fresh butter. And all they've got. All you've got. Right. Oh, fresh, fresh celery. celery. Hello, Lee. How are you? Fine, sir. Glad to see you ashore. Did you get the rest of our order? Yes, sir. Coming right up, sir. Oh, excuse me, Ward. I got to make a phone call. All right. Oh, fresh butter. When have I seen you before? Just an appetizer, sir. Mm, just an appetizer, hmm? <laughs> Hello, Bromley School. Could you get a message to Miss Jean Hewlett when she's through with the class? Ask her to call Commander Connors at the officers' club at the sub base. That's right. Thank you. Say, so you following me around? No, oh, sir, I ain't following you. I'm just walking with you. Well, if you're walking, let me walk up where I can see you, not in back of me. Okay. Wherever I am, you are. Wherever I go, you go. I got a feeling you're spying on me. What is this? Well, I don't know, Chief. I guess it's what you might call coincidence. You know, Captain, this is Michigan celery. Oh, Mac. McDonald. Just a minute. Excuse me, Ward. Captain. Got a bit of good news for you, Mac. You, sir? I just saw some papers over on the captain's desk. What papers, sir? I don't know who could have done it, Mac, but somebody recommended you for promotion to warrant. Oh, oh, that's wonderful of you, Captain. You'll pass your physical and it's in the bag. Yes, sir. Thanks a million, Captain. So, uh, you're going to rain a salute, huh, Chief? Is that it, Lee? Yes, sir. Oh, oh boy. is that gorgeous and milk. Let's have some of that. Fill them up. Am I going to spoil that beautiful arrangement? You better dive into this, Ward. There's not going to be any left. I'll be with you in just a minute. There you are. You can't get milk like that from a sea cow. <laughs> ah, ambrosia. Fill it up again. Nectar, make it two. You better get another pitcher, Lee. Yes, sir. How about some watermelon? Yes, sir. Mr. Connors. Telephone, sir. Oh, boy. That's the call I've been waiting for. Excuse me, Ward. Hello, darling. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I appreciate that, Dewey. Thanks very much, and it's mutual. Oh, Captain Bryson, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I was expecting another call. So I gathered. Dewey, how soon can you leave for Washington? Washington, sir? Don't tell me they're going to transfer me. Oh, don't worry about that. The department wants you to make a personal report and possibly express their appreciation. When can you leave? On the next plane, sir, I suppose. Very well, I'll be right over. Chief. Chief McDonald. What do you want? I, I, I was delivering the captain's laundry, and yours was ready, so I thought I'd bring it up. Who told you to come up here? Nobody but it was ready, so I just thought I'd bring it on up. All right, put it over there. How'd you come out on your physical? What physical? For your promotion to ward officer. I decided to turn it down. Turn it down? Sure, what do I want with it? More work, more grief. I'm satisfied where I am. 
I want any promotion. Maybe you'd rather have a pension. What do you mean, pension? Mac, it's none of my business, and it certainly isn't up to me to give you advice, but if I had a weak heart... What are you talking about? A man don't take nitroglycerin for dandruff. Who told you? I saw you get the fit on the ship. I saw you take the little pills. Mac, there's no disgrace to get sick. Maybe if you told a doctor he could fix you up... Then and... put me on the beach for the rest of my life, huh? No, thanks. I'm satisfied the way I am. I don't want any promotion. And I don't want any pension. I know just what I want. And if you say anything about it, you sneaking little stool pigeon old. Sit down, Oliver. I'm sorry. I can't understand how you got by on your last visit. Oh, that was okay. I didn't have the first attack a couple of months ago, and I went and saw a civilian doctor. Yeah, but there'll be a routine checkup in three months. But there'll be one more cruise before then. You'll understand when I tell you something. Something I've never told anybody else in the world. It was in the last war. My first tour of duty in a submarine. And I wasn't sick. I was pretending. So they left me sure. Was you afraid? The ship never came back. She was sunk in action. All the crew was lost. All except me. I was safe ashore. How do you see? Yeah. I see. So you'll keep your trap shut, won't you? Don't worry about me. Well, I said no, nobody consults nobody when he's born. So they ought to give him a little leeway when he's... I, I, I mean, if he's... Thanks, mate. See you around, Mac. Now, look, girls, I want to tell you once again. You pull the string back with your three forefingers, trying to rest your thumb... Feet 15 inches apart, and your body's facing me squarely. All right? Ready. Aim. Fire. That was all right, girls. Let's, let's try it once again quickly, shall we? And try to remember your form. All right. Aim. Fire. Well, many a shaft at random spent finds marks the archer never meant. <laughs> Girls, you can relax just a moment. How many times do I have to tell you to stay away from here? And many a word at random spoken can soothe or wound a heart that's broken. Do you know who wrote that? Please go away. Sir Walter Scott. Please, I beg of you. Please, do you want me to lose my job? I have a suggestion to make. I call it an offer. Would you like to get rid of me? Most decidedly. Good. Then have dinner with me tonight. Just once. And I promise never to see you again unless you insist on it. Well, what do you say? No. Is that final? Yes. What is this coming along here? <laughs> Could it be Miss Bromley? Now, she wouldn't want to find me here. What about tonight? In all my life, I've never met a more unscrupulous man, a man with less principle. At what time shall I pick you up tonight and where? Seven o'clock, outside the school. Hello, Miss Bromley. Taking your afternoon constitutional? Attention, girls. We'll try it once again. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me, anyone else but me. No, 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 don't sit under Would the Would you mind apple. telling me after riding for three hours where we're going? The best restaurant in the state. Yes, but what state? Massachusetts. If you don't mind, I'd rather eat in Connecticut. Sorry, we've already crossed the state line. We're almost there. What sort of a place are you taking me to? A roadhouse. Is it? Mm-hmm. You sure this is the place? It certainly is. I've been here dozens of times. You'll love it. Not only the food, but the atmosphere. The privacy. You have to ring the bell to get in? Oh, yes, of course. It's very exclusive. Mr. Ward, good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm good so evening. glad to see you. <laughs> I suppose, sir, that you are looking for your... Uh, reservations, uh, yes. I hope they've been well taken care of. Reservations, sir? 
How about business? Business, sir? Yes, the last time I was here, you were jammed for the war, I suppose. Can't expect business as usual, hmm? Uh, yes, sir. Would you yes. like a drink to go to the bar? Uh, Miss Hewlett, I can explain. I don't think so. You mentioned several times that this is rather a small world. I never agreed with you until now. You're quite right. It is small. Too small for the both of us. Oh, just a minute. If you're... Hi, Stinky. Hello, Butch. Come up here, you old sea dog. Oh, give us a kiss. Mm. Hello, how are you this evening? Uh, no, 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 dear. You don't know her. Oh, a new one? Yes. Scoundrel. Why didn't you write? Dear heart, there are no letter boxes in the North Atlantic. But I was thinking of it. That's why I'm here tonight. You're a liar. You're here for some ulterior motive. Probably grub. <laughs> Grandmother, may I present Miss Hewitt? Hello. How do you do? Where'd you get this one? <clears throat> uh, darling, you were saying something a moment ago about some grub. I think I will go have a talk with the cook. Pick him, pick him. I beg your pardon? You pigeon, Remy. Well, I've just learned... A pigeon? Come along, Henry. Yes, ma'am. Dry martinis. Yes, ma'am. This way to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> yes. Yes, he was very funny when he was a kid. There's been a big change since then. Ah, oh, midshipman. It took all our influence to keep him from being thrown out of the academy the first year. I graduated with honors. I was among the first six. There's always something very really queer about that. I don't think he could possibly be as bad as you say he was. Or as good as you say he was. I remember that was taken the first day he went to school. I suggested reform school. <laughs> they wouldn't take my advice. Oh, look at that. A demon. An imp of Satan, if ever there was one. Well, if you don't believe me, look at that. How adorable. No, no, no. That's all. It's all for tonight. What a guy. I shall never forget the first time we took him to Europe. There was a girl on now, the Now, Miss Hewlett is not interested in your aimless meandering. Besides, it's uh, way past your bedtime. I get you, Steve. Good night. Good night. You're okay. The McCoy. I approve of it entirely. Come on, Butch, go to bed. Go to bed. Oh, stinky. All right. Give us a kiss. Hewlett, watch out for him. Chop the shirt off your back if you give them chops. I know. I haven't got a shirt left. How do you like that? Gin rummy before dinner, and she's monopolized your whole evening with that album. I ought to apologize for it. You don't have to. I think she's wonderful. So sweet. Well, in her palmy days, they do say she had three husbands that we know of. Like okay. some more coffee? No, thanks. Getting off late. Don't you think? Oh, no, no, no. Sit down. I haven't had a chance to see you alone all evening long, and I've got to talk to you. No, I think Please, really. Please, sit down. Sit down, have a cigarette. No, thanks. Wait. Where'd you get this picture? Clipped it out of the newspaper. That USO party the other night. I'm starting a new album. Now, just relax. If I get out of line, you can scream, and Butch will come charging down. Of course, she's a little deaf, you know. I can scream loud enough. Yes, I'm sure of that. I think it's time that we came to an understanding. Just what do we mean to each other? I'll be quite honest with you. The other night when you bumped into me in my berth... I... In my berth? Okay, your berth. I thought you were very stunning. Yes, that's it. And I was stunned by you. Of course, my uh, intentions at that time were... You don't need to go any further. Thank you. When I was away on that cruise, I thought of you an awful lot. Even under the sea, I thought of you. And on the surface? I thought how nice it would be if this girl, this awfully swell girl, and I could, uh, could be friends. That's all I ask, Jean. Will you give me your hand on it? If I do, how do I know you won't throw me over your shoulder? I promise not to. My friend, I think it's time that I take you home. Thank you. My friend. Are, um, 
Are you wide awake? Yes. Then listen. We've been friends long enough. It's time we adjusted our relationship. We've either got to be less than friends or more than friends. Jean. Do you know what this is? It's your class ring. Mm -hmm. And you know what it means if I put this on your finger? Morning constitutional? Oh, it's a lovely day. Loveliest day of my life. deceive me or is that another stripe I see? Congratulations. <laughs> so that's why they sent for you in such a hurry, huh? Ah, that was just a mere detail. What they really wanted was to get the dope on that little run-in we had with that mine-laying cue boat. They're pretty concerned about it. Figured they must have a secret base around there somewhere. You remember where that was? Do I? Remember me? I was the man in the rubber boat. Well, we're going out that way again. They interest you to know we're leaving tonight. Well, we better get going. Where to, Commander? Let's go to my quarters and split a bottle. Yes, it was, uh, it was right around there someplace, Dewey. Yeah. And that's the area where we've had our greatest shipping losses, Lord. The only clue we've got is that Q-boat we sunk. Wherever it came from must be the U-boat base. Our job is to locate that base and possible destroy it. What do you mean, if possible? Well, it's not as easy as you think, Ward. It's like hunting for a needle in a haystack. Pretty tough assignment. Sure it is. That's why they gave it to the best submarine skipper they've got. Eh, uh, pipe down, will you? Help yourself to milk, Ward. I'm practically awash now. Better store away plenty of it, Ward. It's going to be a long cruise. The nice quarters you have here, Dewey. A lot better than my digging. Well, it's for rent. Really? Are you kidding? No. When we get back from this cruise, I'll be looking for a house. A house? Yeah. You know that new stripe on my sleeve, Ward? That's more than a stripe. That's the marriage license. Well, you old granite puss. You certainly can serve in silence. Congratulations. When does it happen? This afternoon. I hope. That's her. Beautiful, isn't she? Swell gal, too. She's waiting for me with the officers' club now. Say, wouldn't you like to? I'd, I'd like to do it, but I, I have to run along. There's some things I've got to do. Okay, Ward. I'll see you later. Is Jean Hewlett here? Yes, sir. She's right over there, sir. Why, Ward? What are you? Would you doing? come out on the veranda where we can be alone? Certainly. You make your own rules, don't you? What do you mean, Ward? About stringing a man along. In fact, two men. I just left Dewey Connors. Why didn't you tell me? In the beginning, I didn't think it mattered. And in the end, it mattered too much. I thought it best to tell him first. Then what about me? I did everything I could to discourage you, and you know it. I didn't want to continue seeing you. You know that. I certainly didn't want to fall in love with you. But I did. Dewey Connors is coming here to ask you to marry him. And I'm waiting here to tell him I can't. But you mustn't do that, Jean. What would you advise me to do? 
I... I advise you to forget everything that I told you last night. It all comes under the heading of... Practice? Yes, that's it. You made it sound very convincing. A whole lot more convincing than what you're saying now. Go on. Yes, sir? Have you seen Miss Jean Hewlett? She's on the veranda with Mr. Stewart. With who? Lieutenant Stewart, sir. Oh, thank you, Juan. I'm very fond of Dewey Connors. But I can't marry him. Because I don't love him. I'm in love with you. If you hadn't come along, maybe I'd have married Dewey. But you did come along. You've got to be honest with him. You've got to tell him. That won't be necessary. Julia. Captain. What is it, Mr. Stewart? Before we clear the channel, there's something else I'd like to clear. I'm not interested. All right, forget about me. But I don't think you're being quite fair to her. If you think for one Personal minute... affairs and feelings have no place on the course here, Mr. Stewart. When we get ashore, I'll be glad to take it up with you. Any way you like. Very well, sir. That inlet's just like the last, and all the others, absolutely nothing. Well, we better find that secret base pretty soon. Our subs are doing an awful lot of damage to our ships. Besides, we got just about enough fuel oil left to get us back to New London. Well, it's about time. What am I, stepchild or something? I'm sorry, Chief. Cream in my job, you know I never take cream and coffee. I know, Chief, but I, I thought maybe just for a change, Mr. Stewart, ship bearing 2-8. All ahead, two-thirds. All ahead, two-thirds. Get all tubes ready for firing. For torpedo room, get all tubes ready for firing. After torpedo room, get all tubes ready for firing. Motor room answers, all ahead, two-thirds, sir. What's going on, Mr. Stewart? Why wasn't I called? I picked up a tanker, sir. I'm getting all tubes ready for firing. Clear that order. We won't sink that ship. There's none of our ships in this area, sir. That's an enemy craft. That's why I'm not sinking her now. We've got to sink her now, sir. We'll lose her in the dark. I'll lay the orders, Mr. Stewart. I answer. Secure all tubes. Secure all tubes. But Captain, what are your plans, sir? Well, Brownie, if that's an enemy ship, it's operating from an enemy base. Ever play follow the leader, Brownie? When they open those submarine nests to let that tanker by, they'll be letting us through at the same time. Yes, sir, but what about the mines? The harbor's probably full of them. Yeah, I know. But if we stay close to the propellers of that tanker, we've got an excellent chance of getting through without getting blown up. Come left slowly. Come left slowly, sir. Speed, two knots. Speed, two knots, sir. Change lights for night vision. Aye, aye, sir. Chief, I can't get used to these red lights. That's because you never get out of this hole. An awful lot of help, though, when you have to see in the dark. Torpedo room. Aye, aye. Stand by. Ready to go through minefield. Half torpedo room. Aye, aye. Stand by. Ready to go through minefield. 
Boy, I wonder what would happen if we ever hit one of those mines. I don't know, but there's that five bucks I owe you. Mr. Stewart, let's get on with our course. Holy mackerel. Look at those shore installations. And that harbor jammed with shipping. Boys, it looks like a grand slam. All stop. All stop, sir. We're in. Have all the deck force not on watch muster in the control room immediately. All deck force not on watch muster in the control room on the double. Put her on the bottom, Steve. Flat auxiliary can see through the manifold. Flat auxiliary can see through the manifold. All room reports all stop, sir. Auxiliary is running sir. Oh, men, this is the place we've been looking for. This is the base they've been operating from. Now, here's our plan. A landing party will go ashore for the purpose of demolishing the base. They'll surface just enough to let you men off. Now, when you blow up the ammunition dumps, that'll be my signal to attack the shipping in the harbor. I'll be operating on a split-second schedule. Exactly 30 minutes later, of course, I will be standing by to take aboard those of the landing party who can get back. 30 minutes isn't much. Make every minute count. Mr. Stewart will be in charge of the landing party. I'm not going to ask for volunteers. I know you all want to go. So I'm going to ask only the unmarried men to raise their hands. Take over, Mr. Stewart. Aye, aye, sir. Come forward, men. Born commando here. <laughs> well, we're all set. Mac, you take charge of the machine guns and all the demolition material. Right. Oliver will give you a hand. Curly, you and Hammond rig the rubber boat. Well, what are we going to do, sir? You little Germans, a minstrel show? <laughs> Some of you boys grab them Tommy guns and give them a final check. Are you ready to go? Two or three minutes, sir. I'd like to use one of them to have a word with you. Well? You know what our chances are of getting back. Yes. And you can believe that what I'm going to tell you is the truth. It doesn't matter what you think of me. But don't feel any bitterness toward Jean. She played square with both of us. Believe me, I didn't know what she meant to you. If I had, I... Well, all that matters now is that you believe what I'm telling you is the truth. So long, Jerry. Good luck. Ease her up, Promi. Come on, men. Seventy. Sixty. Forty. 
20. Open the hatch. What does it look like, Mr. Stewart? They don't see us before we get there. We stand a pretty good chance. you and I take the oil tank. When that goes, it'll be a signal to blow up the rest of the stuff. Mac, you take the ammunition dump. Take one man with you. Aye, aye, sir. Let's see. Hey. Okay, Oliver, let's go. Hammond, you take the gasoline drums. Take these two men and Johnson with you. Aye, aye, sir. That's it. Give me the tape. It takes him about 70 seconds to make the round, sir. I can make it. Cover me. Right.
to. I know, sir, but what about going? What are you doing here? I don't like crowds, sir. No more ammunition, sir. The chief, sir. McDonald, come on! Okay, Mr. Stewart, I'm coming. Mac, go ahead, I'll be right with you. swim underwater? No, but I'm learning right now, sir. He's on shore with Mac and Oliver, sir. We can't wait. They're about to die, Browning. Aye, sir. There they are, sir. Hold it, Browning. Aye, sir. Give him a hand. Thank 
down. We won't have to wait for him, sir. Everybody below! Get that, Brownie. We're going down. The eyes are gone. We'll have to stay on the surface. We're at dead fish if we do. Let's go below. Brownie. Brownie, don't dagger. The captain's up on the bridge. Tell Mr. Stewart to take over and take her down to 30 feet. I'll be your periscope till we get out of the harbor. Uh, Captain, this is Mr. Stewart. I'm not going to dive her while you're up. Take her down 30 feet. But, but... That's an order, Mr. Stewart. Aye, aye, sir. Take her down to 30 feet and level off. 30 feet. Captain? I'm all right. Steady as you go. Steady as you go. 170, sir. We're on 170, Captain. Are three and four ready for firing? Three and four ready? Three and four ready, sir. Three and four ready, Captain. Come right to 195. Come right to 195. Right to 195. On the course, sir. On the course, Captain. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Fire three. Fire three. Fire three. Three fires, sir. Well, what about four, Captain? You can save it. We won't need it. Come back to 170. Come left to 170. Left to 170. On the course, sir. On course, Captain. Pretty wet. You better slip this out. Thanks, Brownie. All ahead full. All ahead full. All ahead full. Motor room reports. All ahead full, sir. We're heading for the net. Brace yourself, men. You better crash the net. All hands stand by. We're crashing the net. Cleared the net and we're on our way. Pretty wet up here. Bring me up a few feet. See if you can hold her at 25 feet. 25 feet. Come on, men, bear a hand. Get him up in your sitting position. That's right. Easy does it. Hey, Doc, get the first aid kit. Quick, give me a lift. I'm good. It's only a flesh wound, sir. It's pretty deep. Hey, anybody got a cigarette? When you have it. You better paste that back in, Ward. I don't lose it.
undertaker, open the door. <laughs> hey, oh. easy with a rice, and I have a ration. Oh, you know. Congratulations, my boy. Well, Thank you, Uncle Bob. I told you, I warned you. Serves you right. Oh, <laughs> Congratulations, Stinky. You don't deserve her. <laughs> oh, Uncle Bob, excuse me. I want you to know my new executive officer. My dear. Here, here, look out. Here's another of them. They're all wolves in this family. <laughs> now, just a minute. Oh, Stinky, leave the poor girl alone. Come on. I want to know how he sold you this bill of goods. Well, you're back not only with the broom at the masthead, but with the bride by your side. Uncle Bob, I'm, I'm certainly glad that you wanted me to New London. I take it you're now a confirmed submarine man. Well, sir, yes and uh, no. You'd rather go back to the PT boats? Well, uh, no and, and yes. Now, can't you chart a little more definite course? <laughs> I think so, sir. The PT boats are swell. They do a grand job. And they'll play their part in winning the war. But not without the submarines. They've got their job to do in all the seven seas. And boy, how they're doing it. And the carriers that bring the planes, that drop the bombs that sink the enemy ships. And the cruisers that protect the airplane carriers. And the battleships, the dreadnoughts and super dreadnoughts. The big shots of the fleet. They're in there punching, too. They're all in there doing their job, working together. I found that out, sir. It isn't one branch of the service, it's all branches. And it isn't all ships, it's men. The men behind the guns of the PT boats, and the submarines, and the Coast Guard ships, and the mine layers, and the tenders, and the tankers, and the troop ships. The men that take them out, that fight their way over and land them there. That's the Navy, the United States Navy. <laughs> 